There we go. Hi, everybody, and welcome. Um, today's Speed Tree Live is going to be using the Games Modeler. And um, we are going to be making a bunch of little tiny plants um, for games. Um, some of them are quite optimized, and some of them are a little higher poly. Um, but if you guys are joining in, you can drop your questions in the chat. And hopefully as we go, we're just going to go over a couple different ways to... Um, use uh, pre-atlas textures. We're going to be using um, Quixel Megascans uh, to use the fronds and also these lettuce leaves we've got here. And um, these butterflies were just for kicks and giggles, so they're kind of fun. Um, and then later in the week, we're probably going to do another live stream um, where we are basically arranging and putting these together in a greenhouse that we've made inside of Speed Tree as well. So that'll be a different stream. Um, this one, we're just going to focus on making some plants. So to get started, um, I'm already loaded in our textures. Um, what we've done is just gone to um, Quixel here and picked out. I just typed in garden and I found the first lettuce leaf I could find. Um, clicked out and got this romaine leaf. Or that's an African daisy, sorry. Um, and I got a couple of different um, pots as well. And so, <laughs> making sure I didn't have anybody here with the butterflies. The butterflies are fun. Um, I just threw those in there. I wanted to, um, for kicks and giggles, show you guys what these are. All it is is actually a, um, <laughs> I forgot to open that one up. We're not really going to do much with the butterflies today. Um, the butterflies are on a single atlas. I've made a cutout for one butterfly, exactly. And I made it a very, very, very simple cutout with a fold down the middle. And um, I could have made it LOD, but I didn't really do that. And then I set it up. It's actually on a um, spine here, and it's set up on a frond. And that one just got added on it. It doesn't need to be there anyways. And so what I've done for wind is I've just used our um, bending motion from our wind. And then I gave it the little like, leaf flutter to let it blow in the wind there. And they're so cute. I love them. We've had these in the library previously. And they're silly. And I'm all for it. Um, so let's go ahead and get down to what we're actually making today. Um, we are going to start off by putting these lettuce leaves in a little box, just sort of like a seedling planter there. And make sure my sound's on. There we go. Alright, so we've got a blank file here. I'm going to make these a little wider so you can see better. And we're going to do everything from scratch. I'm going to bring in the materials even though I already have them in here for you, but we're going to just take it from the beginning. Um, now, Speed Tree has our tree plane here. Um, this is technically a zone, um, but just so you understand, when you're working with small plants, you're going to be working within this area here. And a lot of you guys will remember from Speed Tree 8 that um, a, a zone was necessary if you want to do some scattering too. Um, but we've got some alternate methods here, so we're going to just start with the fun stuff and then we'll kind of track over and make sure we cover everything. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my lettuce atlas. So when you bring in something, um, I've got it in a separate herb folder here because I brought in a bunch of them. Um, we're going to be using the, um, <laughs> they all have fun names because they're from um, Quixel. <laughs> but uh, we're going to grab our color map and because of Quixel, <clears throat> Sorry, Quixel's naming convention does not automatically bring them in, but that's okay. We just want to grab our normal, the same map. It's going to be that one there. I'm going to grab our gloss map. And um, it's going to be roughness because uh, that's what came with this set. So when you bring in a roughness map, you're going to want to invert it. And I'm going to put the gloss level on one because uh, the mega skin assets tend to be at the tone where they're already set at 100% in speed tree. Um, we'll adjust it from there as well. We're going to bring in the AO. Excuse me. And um, that should do is for that. So the second thing we need to do is we need to make a cutout for it. Um, we got a couple different leaves on here. And we're going to go ahead and hit edit. And we're going to pick our first leaf. We're going to put the pivot point 
on the bottom of the leaf. I forgot to bring the opacity map in, so we're going to do that really fast. <laughs> so grab that one. All right, and this can be our new um, guy there. So we're going to go ahead and cut that out again. Now we should see the actual cutout there. This is what I was missing. I'm going to align this with the leaf. And this is going to be for games. So we're going to start with our lowest poly and then add polys as we go um, so that we can make this nice and clean. I want to be able to um, LODs these, but also have some movement to them because they are very curly leaf plants. And we're doing individual leaves on these. It's kind of strange for a game's asset, but when they're so small like this, um, that extra detail is actually going to help us out. And we are saving space because they're already pretty tiny. Um, I lost, I lost my cutout there. Sorry about that, guys. I clicked outside of the screen. I had to tap something from the stream station. All right. So now we've got this going in there. I'm going to do our lowest poly first. Probably want to get rid of that last point and just make sure these are good. Um, I'm going to make sure that I can fold down the middle. So I'm going to keep that one in the middle. And then we're going to do a, an actual curl on this or to keep that kind of straight. And this is going to be our low. And then I'm going to add another one up here so they can curl fold at the top in the medium slot. And then... Um, we get extra fancy here and just add one more. That's not giving me a whole lot extra there. Um, and these are just going to be kind of high poly, but um, if we need to take from it, we always can. We're going to give that the high slot, and then we're going to go make our second one. We're going to go back to the material tab. You're going to hit add um, here, and you're going to make a second cutout. So we're going to use our second leaf. We're going to angle that one, how it would be growing. Go ahead and add our other polygons in here. And while we're working on that, all right, that'll be our low. I'll do just kind of the same method here, our medium and our high. I'm gonna give it a lot in the tip up here, so it's got like a little extra curl going. And then let's go ahead and use this little skinny leaf. And I like I use this one on the other one because it's so uh, variant. Um, Technical Goat, this is a games-oriented stream. Um, these are definitely methods that you can use for cinema. Um, it's going to be almost the exact same way. You can just kind of go nuts with adding a little bit of extra polygons in there. Um, but I wanted specifically to show you using the Atlas so that we can talk about um, LODs for these tiny plants and what that looks like. Um, so, good for both. Uh, I am using the games modeler, a couple differences in here, and it's going to be able to set up the games wind, which is what I had the butterflies on, and um, my LED slider down here. We're going to go ahead back to our material and we're going to add one more. Um, I'm going to choose the skinny leaf here, and we're going to go ahead and add that. Now, if I was going to build this, um, I think I made the high first on that one and I forgot to put the pivot point where it needs to go. So let's put that straight a bit high and then we'll go backwards. Um, I usually start from low to high, but it doesn't really matter. <laughs> there we go. Um, this one's really, really skinny. And the thing is, is you want to keep the cutouts a little bit more similar. They need to have that fold in the middle because we're going to be doing the same adjustments to all three leaves. So when you have things that are drastically different shapes, um, like this in the atlas, you want to th keep that in mind that your cutout probably should be kind of like a similar pattern. Um, I went 10 and we just need to lose uh, one for that bottom one. I think I'm going to lose it there and try to do like a zigzag. Um, but I want to keep that fold in the middle. I'm going to see if we can get something here with improved folding. No, it doesn't really help me out that much. So, trial and error. So I think that one will give us the best fold. We're going to go ahead and save that out. Alright, if I was going to build this, so I want to keep in mind um, 
you kind of want to think about if you're going to reuse it, if you're going to have it straight from the ground. So if I was going to just build these lettuce leaf, lettuce spots coming out from the ground, um, I would go ahead and add a trunk. And then I would add a frond. And we take the material that we just cut out and drag that onto there. All right, and so we're gonna get any variation of these three leaves right here. If you go to the material bar now, you're gonna see that I have this set to that atlas as my material. And in the mesh, I have it set to any. If I had one of those cutouts that I wanted to use specifically, I could say, put it on cutout two. And that would be how you would do that if you need to use weights for any of these. Um, so we're gonna put any on there. And if I was going to do a row of these, um, just as a regular plant, what I would do is I would want to make these the right size first. So I put this on 0.2, really a teeny tiny guy. And we're going to go to the skin tab and we're going to take out our length composition and our length kill so that we've got enough room there. It's very, very fat. So that's why there's a little mountain um, down there. We're going to go to the skin and we're going to take out um, most of the girth of this just so we can see. And now we have a little teeny, teeny, tiny guy. Um, when you are small like this, the um, height indicator does go away. So under six feet, if you're using US increments, um, the height indicator is going to go away. So you want to kind of think about um, this lettuce leaf is probably not a foot tall. Um, but for scale of what we're doing, that's going to be fine. And um, to answer um, Rikijas Cascas, I don't know how to say your actual screen name, but um, yes, there are different software distinctions. And I'm going to let Danny type that one out because uh, it's a little longer. But yes, you want to make sure that you can export to what you, where you need to go. And so the different, the different modelers are um, geared towards that. All right, so we want to put our trunk to spine only. So we go to the skin tab here, and we're going to put polygons and switch it to spine only. And there's our floating leaf. And what we would do is we would want to sink this down so it's actually kind of actually hitting the ground. We're going to do our boundary on the front. We're going to go to start and make sure it's all the way to the ground. Um, from there, I would shape these guys. I probably would do a little bit of curl, a little bit of roll on these, and... Um, shape them out that way. If you're going to do a row of plants, um, I would put this on, sorry, we go back to our spine and we would put this on interval. And we're going to make sure our last lets us do that. We're going to put this on one. Um, sorry, that's our count. And we're going to increase the frequency. And now I have little rows of these guys. So what I would do, um, if I was going to do like a set of these, I don't have back sign, that's why they're disappearing. If you go back to material tab and put two sided on, you should see the leaf now. Um, so if we were doing something very, very simple like this, and we want them all to come out at the same spot, I can actually just duplicate these guys, attach them on there. And then on this leaf, we're going to do a different start angle. So what we would do is we would add some variation in there and then maybe have these guys bend a little bit. Um, with gravity, or we could use curl, we could use an actual um, cider thing, and we would go to the gin tab and we would change up the position just a little bit, very, very tiny numbers, and maybe change up the rotation so that they're not quite on each other, um, and that's how you would get some little clusters like that. If you really want them to not run into each other, you could put on um, the collision when you're done and get rid of those but since they're so close and since they are game tree plants um you probably aren't going to use collision on these little tiny guys so um with that concept done that's kind of like plant small plant 101 for doing the lineup um let's talk about doing it within this little box i'm going to hide these for a second and we might come back to them i'm going to hit save for a second and we're going to bring in the box. So you're going to bring that in just like the other material we did there. I brought it in earlier and it looks like this. Um, we have a mesh that goes with the box. And so you're going to go to the meshes tab after you bring in that material. And you're going to bring in the, um, the box that goes with it. You do that with the little plus button up here. Um, 
trying to make sure I've covered everything without wasting too much time. <laughs> and so um, after you brought that in, I would like to, t oh, I should mention real fast, um, when you're using these game assets, Crixel actually re supplies you with um, sometimes seven or eight LODs. Um, you can add them all in if you need a really, really smooth transition. Um, for a cinema tree, I'd be using that LOD zero. Um, but since this is a game tree, I'm using LOD six, seven, and eight, um, cause they are the lowest poly and they're still going to LOD as I go down. When you bring in number six, it's going to automatically bring in seven and eight for you or however high you go. You can jump if you want to use the high LOD and then one of the middle ones and one of the lower ones, um, that a hundred percent works. Um, if you use the lowest LOD for the highest, just keep in mind that these are so low poly that the shadows might get a little bit interesting. So I tend to give it a little bit. And so um, we're starting at LOD 6 and we're going to go back to our material. You're going to go to the cutouts and meshes and you're going to go to the drop down and you're going to select the mesh that you've just brought in. Um, so those guys go together. The next thing we want to do is add a... Um, Photogrammetry mesh. You're going to have access to this in V9. And um, this is in V8, but it's it won't export in the subscription modelers. And it's really, really big. Um, these are all scaled kind of large here. So what you want to do is go to the mesh tab and scale it down. And then keep in mind how tiny we are. This is a little teeny tiny box. Um, the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the screen space keys to move this up where I want it. This is a node edit. Um, if you don't want to do this on a node edit, you can put these on zones and procedurally place them. But for small stuff like this, where you're doing one or two, um, just tap that W on your keyboard and toss it up, kind of sitting on the ground. Um, the next thing we do is, uh, this is also just one way to connect the actually roots. Um, I use this one a lot. It's a uh, Megascans dirt roots, uh, if you look for it that way. Um, it has an interesting normal and that's why I went for it rather than a flat dirt. And also just cause I, you know, reuse it, reuse, recycle. Um, that class was down pretty low, but that's okay. So I brought that one in. Uh, what we're going to do is we're actually going to make a cutout for it. So it's a flat texture. You normally would just apply it and repeat it. Um, we're going to go ahead and make a new one just so I can do that with you guys. Um, so this is a box and I'm going to be putting it, sinking it down in here. Um, so what I'm going to do for this, I'm going to put the pivot point down here and I'm just going to leave it a simple grid. I'm not going to add any displacement to it because you're not going to be able to see a whole lot. We're going to get the upraised part from the normal. So we really don't need any more box than this. <laughs> um, I'm going to save it for all three points just so it's a low poly mesh. And we are going to add it to the scene. And what I'm going to do is add this as a leaf mesh. We're going to select the material, the dirt. I'm going to put the orientation to sky influence so it's facing up. I'm going to move this just like I did the box and kind of hover it over knee, over the uh, area we're doing here. And then we're going to use our skew controls to make this the right size. So the first thing I want to do is switch back to generator mode. I'm going to go to the skin tab and make it a little bigger. And I'm also going to adjust the scale here. So I'm going to take that X and stretch it to the edge of the box. I probably overstretched it. Um, so you can get away with just a little bit of stretching. Probably need to move this a little bit as we go, just to make sure I've got the right matchup. And then we'll go back. Um, I'm hitting the tab. I'm just doing this to show you guys, but to go back and forth between moving it, which is a note edit, and um, making sure you're Leaf mesh is actually the same size. I'm just making sure I'm in generator mode. Um, we're gonna do a little adjustment here. And now we have a dirt in a box. <laughs> it's not exactly the most scientific way to do it, but it works. And uh, especially when you're stacking a bunch of low poly things inside of a scene like this, um, that'll work. So how do we attach a leaf to a leaf? We need anchors. 
Um, we added anchors in V8, it's nothing new. Um, I'm gonna hit save real fast, so we're gonna go ahead and go to the materials. Um, this one that I uh, made a second ago, we're going to go ahead and add some anchors to it, even though I already cut it out. Um, so what we've got here is we've got, I don't know which direction I actually set it in there, so we'll find it out. I'm going to put a row of one, two, three, four, five, and make them as neat as I possibly can. And the neat thing is, is that since this box is a mesh, um, I can place my leaves in here and no matter where I put them, if I have them coming in on the bar, I can actually use collision to make sure that they don't come in there. So we're going to see what this looks like. We're going to save it out. And we're going to go ahead and add our lettuce leaf. So we're going to add another leaf. And there they are. And we're going to do um, sky influence so those are go they're facing up. And we're going to go up on those so they're oriented the right way. And it looks like my um, anchors are facing the other direction from the one that I did. So let's just fix that real fast. <laughs> we'll put, oh, and we also have um, two things selected here on the material. All right, this guy on my dirt I had it set to any and we want to use the new one that I just made um, just that one so just make sure we did that so let me reset that for you since I did it in the wrong direction I had no way of knowing so we'll just X these out and we'll do our rows a little bit more pointedly um, up that way across <laughs> so I'm gonna do three little rows they're not perfect. If you want to spend forever doing that, that's fine too. Um, one thing that will help actually right off the bat is if um, these are turning based on the axis there. And that's okay. Um, you could take the time to turn these so they're all facing the direction, if you, the same direction, if you would like complete control. But since I want them to be all turned around different ways, I don't mind that they are going to be different, if that makes sense. Um, this is the direction that the leaf faces. So let's say, try that again and see what we got. We're going to add our leaf on there, which is going to be our lettuce atlas. And now we have all of our little leaves on there. They're really big. And you can see that they already knocked out on the uh, wooden area. So let's make these guys a little smaller. We're going to go to the skin tab and we're going to decrease the size. And... Um, over here, I'm going to say, um, I got a little close to the edge. I might just uh, go ahead and delete that last row for the sake of it. So we're going to go edit. And I don't know if it was that row or that row. I did it outside of our um, cutout there. I don't know if y'all noticed that and y'all were laughing at me the whole time, but. Um, there we go. I don't have any questions coming in, but um, hopefully you guys are still with me. Um, all right, so the next thing we want to do is kind of make these a little more lifelike. And we're going to do material tab. And we want to curl these up. So we're going to shape these guys. I'm going to add um, some variance to curl, some variance to the fold. And most importantly, we need to give them a um, bit of a second life there. Um, we want to do some variance in the size. You can do this across the box if you needed. Um, it would be across the leaf, but um, a twist is going to be real helpful for these to make them look 3D. And once you're pretty happy with that, what you can do is you can actually um, do copy, paste, and we're going to connect it back to our um, <clears throat> leaf there. We don't see new leaves because they are in the exact same positions. So we're going to take that second leaf and we're going to give them a different location. So instead of folding up the way they are, we kind of kind of bend them back a different direction and maybe actually turn them a bit. Um, maybe make them even smaller so they sit kind of below. Um, if you need to space these out, that would work too. Um, it looks like this cutout, we did a mistake on it. So let's make sure. Um, so what happened here is we actually ended up adding 
Let's look and see which one that is. There's that one. Hello, people joining in. That small one worked and the last one. It's because we were working from the wrong one. That's what it was. I didn't use the new one that I just brought in. Um, there we go. So now we have any. I was really confused about that. I thought we had cut out the three skinny ones. There we go. Um, I can't think and stream sometimes. <laughs> True story. And okay, so there we have our little uh, box. You can go ahead and add more um, if you wanted to do sets in here or, uh, you know, form them different ways. Yes, but for very, very low poly, we're going to go ahead and show our um, overlay text here so we can see how much we, are, we have. Um, so this thing's only 834 polys right now. And it's tiny, um, but it's hot. Um, sorry, in a pot. Uh, something like this and on this one I didn't bother putting dirt in it because it's such a big fluffy plant um, that it doesn't matter but I used a zone for this um, so what we're gonna do is we're going to hide everything we're gonna go ahead and build this from the ground up so you can just see what we did um, actually instead of hiding everything I'm just gonna delete everything so we have a clean slate here and we're gonna do the exact same thing. So I brought in a fern for this one. It's just very simple. It has three leaves. I've made three cutouts for it and they're all gonna sit in there the same way. And making sure we're good. Um, what we're gonna do is almost the exact same. We're gonna go add a mesh. And for this one, we're gonna be using our um, a different pot. I brought it in a clay pot. I brought in a, uh, looks like that was the right pot, <laughs> um, a clay pot and it is assigned to a different mesh. That's our carrot. Um, I would find it. There we go. Um, so on our material tab, the right one's assigned there. We're going to drag and drop that on. So, um, it's real, real big. That's okay. We're going to resize it and scale it down. I'm going to do the exact same thing here where we drop it. I'm um, going to hit the WT really fast and just lift it up. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to add a zone to the screen. It's going to be a default generator. We don't use zones a whole lot. Um, they're sort of their unique thing. Um, they are good for scattering grass and generally other than that we don't use them too often. And we're actually going to build off of this zone. So um, it placed it out here. The zone is going to exist anywhere within this 0 to 1 start. So if you wanted to move the zone and you wanted to use the generation style, um, you can push it places by using the first and last or you can rotate it. Um, I clicked the wrong one there. You can rotate it around um, with the position. So if you had a couple of these. Um, and you were scattering one plant, um, you could use absolute and do a couple of these guys and build your plant with one single flower off of these. And you'll have one each time you build it. Um, but for this, we just want one. And we're going to build our fern off of that. I'm just going to leave it over here because we can move the zone and I don't really need to make it any bigger than that. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to build our plant over here. Um, off the zone, we're just going to add a trunk. And um, of course, it's ginormous, so we're going to make it short. And we're going to go to the skin tab and we're going to make it skinny. Um, for this fern, uh, we're just going to use the leaves. We're going to make this very, very low poly and put all of the curl and everything into the leaf themselves. Um, so we actually don't need this frond, but I'm going to leave it on for just a second. I'm going to make that there. I'm going to use um, the generation tab here to add a couple of these guys in there. I'm going to just do uh, three of them to start. 
you could use absolute steps for this um or you can use interval would be a good one um if we want these guys to spread out a little bit so right now they disappeared because i have the first and last on zero i'm going to put this on once and allow them to go to the edge of that i'm going to push them towards the center and by pulling the last down there and then i'm going to change up the start angle so i want them to twist out and i also want them to use gravity a little bit now that we have that on there, they probably need to be a little longer, honestly. Uh, we're going to add our frond. And we're going to add our material. So, um, that frond that we've cut out over here, we're going to assign that. And I don't remember which one it was, so we'll figure that one out as we go. <laughs> It should have been, we'll see what material it was. It had the rose in there. There we go. PJ Vias. I should have renamed these so they were easier to um, find. There we go. And we've got our mesh set to any. If you were going to use this um, with a more complicated um, setup, which let's just do that for the sake of learning. Let's go ahead and put our um, any for one. But say we had a shorter, tinier one in here. um that we wanted on the next set we would go repeat these uh, let's do our short one here we're gonna do a different start angle and i want this one to just be on skin material sorry about that wrong one and we're gonna do our same atlas but we're going to make sure that the i put it on the trunk texture <laughs> not not the right one um grab that one and put it on the third cutout so just our smaller shorter ones down there um what you could do with that is make it an entirely different width um shrink it down to the bottom and then make these guys a little shorter than the original so let's take our trunk and we're gonna go to the spine and we're gonna just shape these guys up a little bit Let's go ahead and put this on spine only so we can see what we're doing. We're going to go to the skin tab and put it on spine only. And now we've got our fluffiness there. Um, this is probably simple. Um, what we really want to do is get the feeling of it being very full. Um, I'm going to do this by taking the fronds and I'm going to use roll. I'm going to keep this curve on here. So I'm moving just the tip. This is almost the exact same thing as um, our leaf roll. Uh, we're going to kind of like turn these different directions. We're going to do some variance in curl, variance in gravity, and variance in fold. Variance is apparently my favorite of all the things. Um, and these, we kind of want to look at our lighting for a second. No, we brought in this material. I've got a pretty low light on this. We want these to be luminescent, but not look like hard, shadowy plastic things. Um, so we could do that by looking at the frond lighting. Um, we're going to go down here. We're going to turn on our normals for a second. Oh, they're already on. Oh, they're very tiny. And we're going to kind of see um, where they're facing, which is out right now. And on the tips, I might actually point the light up on these. Um, so what we can do for that is alignment. And we can pull those up. Um, you might need to do something in the profile curve there where we take just the tip and we push them different directions. We don't want that for sure. We do the pockety. Um, but I'm trying to get a nice highlight around the actual edge of the leaf. And we want to kind of like look at this from all sides. And um, this one right here, we've got something wonky going on there. That little uh, cutout there was because I had the trunk still on and I had a material assigned to it. So we want to make sure that's off. We're going to go to skin, spine only, get rid of that. And we got, we don't have any questions coming in. So that's a okay. All right. So now we got a little shadowy going on this one. So we want to do the same thing and kind of adjust the lighting on this one. Since these are pointing more down, we can use the um, parent puffy to puff these out a little bit. And we're going to get a little bit more of a bright light on those guys. Um, so we continue doing this to shape it up. I obviously probably need some more leaves, 
but we're going to go ahead and lift this up and bring it to the top of the pot. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab that zone. I'm going to hit the W key. Um, these are showing me that I'm in node mode and those are the spines behind them. So the weird purple spider creature is, <laughs> um, that shows up because we're in node mode right now. Um, we're going to center this and just kind of set our plant in the pot. Um, you could make a bunch of these at once and stick them in several pots if you wanted to do a cholesterol, a cluster of pots. Um, it just makes it easier to randomize and get different things out of this. So now when I randomize this, I can get an entirely different plant in here. Um, we are going to go back to our generator mode and make sure that our leaves aren't cutting out a little bit. Um, this actually ended up being okay. So we're going to go ahead and maybe lift those just a little bit so they're not running into the edge of the pot and then curl them instead of having them do that. And we would continue filling that out. What I might do with this one is, um, you could add an anchor for some more leaves to come off. Um, might be a good solution there. So what we would do for that is add a leaf mesh and I would go back to my cutouts. Um, a good way to randomly do this would be to only add it to some of them. So I might do anchor and put it down here towards the bottom on this guy and save it into the top. Um, we're going to do the same thing and add it to the medium one. And then pop our anchor down there on the low one. Um, so let's see what that does for us. We're going to go ahead and assign that with the same one. It's going to be our uh, fern. And we should see some of those pop up. It could be that we just got a um, variance on there. Let's go ahead and check out another cutout and add an anchor on one of these guys. Have the table selected instead. So we just add the table anchored to the leaf. That's okay. I'm going to make sure you grab the right cutout. There we go. All right. Now we have this little leaf hanging out there. I'm going to um, push these up towards the sky and then actually just curl and fold these to give us some extra, some extra interest in there. And that's how you would build that plant up. Um, Vulcan Studios is asking how to create ivy. Um, we have an entire stream on that. We did a vine on the wall um, for both games and our um, cinema modeler. But real fast, um, totally fine to do that. If we wanted to do ivy along the ground, um, why don't I open up our third plant? Um, let's say we have, I'll just do the small plant pot. I'm going to close down some of these guys. Um, make sure we have, don't have too many of those. Let's take this guy and just demonstrate what this would look like if it was Ivy. Um, since we have this all set up, this is actually a great demo. It will be the last thing we cover for today. Um, just cause we've been done the, doing all these little plants, but, um, all right, so in speed tree nine, this will be a little bit different than speed tree eight. Um, instead of doing our mesh collections, we'll be doing something with crawling. And it's now moved to, um, we have a, a forces tab on every single one now. Um, so let's say we wanted this to be ivy and we wanted to crawl out of the pot and along the ground. Um, let's just make that our, our goal here. I'm gonna do a quick cutout. I'm just going to add a blank mesh in here. We're going to add, um, sorry, instead of adding it that way, we're going to do it this way. Do an add new, double click that, and we're going to call this our ground. I did it in caps to be extra excited. <laughs> All right. And then we don't need a material to it, um, but we do want to add one so that we can add it to the thing. So we're going to just add one. It's going to be our ground. It's going to be blank. That's fine. You can add a material if you want to do it that way too. Our ground material is going to go to ground. We're going to do a cutout for it real fast. We just need to square and I'm just going to put the um, 
I don't need that anchor there. I'm going to put it, the pivot point in the middle and then save it out. All right, and so this guy is going to be our ground. We're going to add this as a mesh. Be our ground, and we're going to make him really big. And now we've got something to reference. Now we're going to take our trunk number two, and we're going to tell it that we would like it to crawl towards the ground. Um, the first thing we want to do is we want to make the ground something that attracts the branch. So we're going to right click this. We're going to make a geometry force. And this is going to be our ground pull. All right. And then we're going to set it to attract. And we're going to, um, you could prune it or obstruct it or stop it. But for this one, we want obstruct. Um, we don't need to align things, so we're going to keep our fancier things off unless we happen to need them. And this is our new force mesh. You can push the little, uh, I've been calling it jelly bean, but it looks like dipping dots to me also. Um, kind of fun little thing here. You can click on this to select the um, mesh force properties anytime you need them. Now that's where that went. The second thing you want to do is you want to set the path. So our trunk two is we are going to go to the forces tab. We're going to tell it to go to the ground and it's going to give you a little warning here that says it's not ready. Um, we're going to go to the gen tab and we're going to put it in pass two. And that means that the ground exists and then the trunk two is going to exist after that. And it's giving me an empty spine warning because it could not figure it out. It's it's telling me that the stop it is on. So I'm going to go back to the force. Um, and we're going to look at the, uh, sorry, the force mesh settings here. We're going to make sure that we have everything set up correctly. You want it to obstruct. We should see that. I wonder if it is unhappy because it's on a zone. Let's try it. Let's put our spine. Um, I moved that for a second. There we go. Here's our plant back. We're going to go ahead and add our pot back as a loop mesh. It's really big. And we're going to scale it back down and lift it back up. Probably needs to go even tinier. And then I'm just going to move that back where it is. Sorry. Now we've got that. that. Just take it out of the zone because we don't need more than one of it. Um, the pot is going to be an influence as well, so we're going to include that in the ground setting there. I'm just going to add the selected to and add it to the whole thing. So now these are both part of the same. Um, I should have added that just now. There we go. So now they are both going to influence. I'll start with the upper and see if we can get, there we go. Now these guys, let's make them very long. Um, this is going to be our influence and we're just going to make them very long. Um, one of the things that's happening here is um, I have the force uh, on a curve. So if we go back to our small branches here and I go to the forces tab and I make it um, influenced a little earlier, they're going to crawl around that way. And they seem to be more attracted to the pot right now, and that's okay. We're going to use a force to actually pull some of these out. Um, we're going to use some of these uh, mesh settings to get them to do a little bit better. So in order for this to do a better job, we need more polygons um, in the accurate spine. So we're going to go to the segment tab and add just a few um, in the accuracy. Let's see if we can get this to pull down. And then you'll see we're getting really, really some ugliness there. I think we can get that to go away if we go to our trunk and tell it to listen to the pot too. 
think we're going to do just the top. And something in there is with the acrid spine, and we will look into that later because I can't seem to figure out what that is right now on. Um, we're going to make these a little prettier. Um, we're going to add just a few segments towards the bottom. So I had taken them down so they were weighted, and then I think just the curve there will really help it out. Um, not so bad. Let's make this one a little shorter. There we go. Now we finally got some on the ground. Um, what we can do here is we can add a force a direction and pull that up. Um, I'm going to grab that direction one again. I'm going to turn this so that it's pointing that way. Um, they can kind of pull that away. And I'm going to give these guys a little bit. So we're going to go to the force tab and we're going to turn that direction on for them. And now they're going to pull towards the ground a little bit. Um, so what I would continue to do here is actually add some upper level um, things here. What I would do is actually just copy and paste these onto there. And then we've got the same exact thing going. If we want to do a very, very sprawled one, um, you could have this on the edge of the shelf. And if you wanted it to hang down again at the end, um, you could grab that and actually either pull it down or turn the, uh, turn our ground pull off towards the end. Um, and then add a little bit of gravity towards the end of the branch um, to have them do various things there. Now, Speed Tree 9, we've added some fun stuff there. You see how these are all straight? Um, before, it was very, very hard to get these things to balance out with like noise or bouncing or doing anything to the ground. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our forest and click the dip and dot um, for the official way to call it that. Um, and we are going to... Oh, sorry, I keep forgetting they're on the branch itself. We're going to grab the branch. We're going to the branch force properties, and we are going to add some noise in there. So there's a specific special noise that is specifically for crawling things. Um, and you can put that on along the, the branch there. And it's telling me, probably going to be a warning, that it's um, high. Um, and what that is is I've got my ground on very, very high, so it's a little bit balanced out. Let's see if we can get some variance in there. I pulled it back down. Um, follow strength has to be on in order for the noise to happen. I forgot about that. So what we could do is we could add a little bit of turbulence in there and get this guy real, real snaky. Um, they're very, very long, but also fun. You can also align with the ground now um, or align with whatever you're growing on. Um, you've got these settings here to allow um, this alignment in here. You can set this on and it's going to give you an indicator of how far out that reaches. Um, <clears throat> so for this one, for the ground, you should be seeing a spike as well. Uh, if we made that a little bigger, um, what we could do with that is actually go to our leaves and use our forces and use the ground and align our leaves to the actual ground surface, um, which is kind of a neat trick if you're doing something like ivy that needs to be parallel. Um, I hope that answers your question. Um, we do have a longer tutorial on that. And um, if you want to click back a couple episodes, uh, that one's in there. Wow, that arrow is just kind of ominously hanging out of the top of there. Um, what we're going to do is um, finish making this scene. We're going to put the whole thing in Unreal with a couple of logs and a couple of other plants. Um, so we'll have the finished greenhouse in a couple of weeks. And I don't remember the next one, but it's not greenhouse related. Um, I'll leave it up for a couple of seconds if you guys have any questions. Um, but that is pretty much our stream for today. <laughs> so, if you were going to export this um, out, we didn't talk about LODs at all, and I said I was going to. Sorry about that. 
what you would want to do to set these guys is make sure that your LEDs are set so that our weird ground plane here does not change size. We would want to click that. We want to make sure that our LED is actually set to not scale. Um, and we want to look at our... I turned off our um, text overlay there. There we go. Alright, so this would be a high a high poly, but this is actually about the same size as our, our hero trees for these three things going in there. Um, so we try to optimize these a little bit more before we send them out to the game. We see a little popping there, and that's the low, low, low poly box shifting in and out. Um, probably would want to export these out, not in a big set like this, unless you really, really want specific placement, but rather make a couple different files with small plants and export them out. We have our leaves themselves are dropping polygant. The light is a little funky. Um, so what we would do on there is go to most of our fronds because they make up the plant. And then as we back out, make sure we're not losing anything pertinent. Um, so that little one makes a big difference when your plant is this small. Um, so it might be something to look into. Um, when you go to export, you would go export to game. This would be our Unreal. And we uh, Speed Tree 9 does have the option to uh, preview your atlas. But if you needed to resize or take a look at what you've got going on in here, you can actually move these now. Um, so... Uh, that pretty much wraps it up for me. I'm going to go ahead and sign off, actually. Um, but thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next week.